Hello and welcome back to Rust 101. This is video six and we're talking about error handling. So you'll recall uh, from the last video that we talked about a load of stuff like structs, uh, generic structs, which, uh, so structs are basically ways of holding onto bits of data. Uh, generic structs are ways of um, saying this thing holds one of these, but I don't yet know what one of these things is. Uh, and we looked at enums, uh, which can be generic. And in particular, we looked at an enum called option uh, which can either be something or nothing. So it's it's Rust's way of handling things that in other languages might be a null point or something like that, which uh, um, uh, is a, a weird and difficult way of handling uh, things that are missing. Uh, in Rust, there's this there's this kind of clear, explicit way of saying there's either something here or there's nothing here, and if we don't say that, then there's there's always something. Um, but today we're going to um, extend that idea. Um, into thinking about how we handle errors, because we can we use a, another enum called a result uh, to do that. But there's different ways of handling errors. Let's have a quick look at what they are. So first of all, let's look at this function, divide. Um, and it has a case where um, things go wrong. So in, in the normal case, when y is not 0, you can just divide x by y and return the result. And that's what's happening on line 5. But in the case where y is 0, what should we do? Um, well, let's have a look at one thing we can do. One thing we can do is we can so-called panic. Now, if you come from a language that d handles exceptions, this is going to sound a bit like exceptions. But I want you to try and put that out of your mind and think of panic more as crash, right? Um, just stop the program. Uh, that's the kind of naive first understanding of what panic is. It, it just says stop right here. Um, uh, so panic is a macro, that's why there's an exclamation mark. It's also, also quite appropriate, I think, for panic that there's an exclamation mark there. Um, and then you can provide a message. Uh, in this case, we've provided the message cannot divide by zero. And uh, the, the, the normal thing that will happen when you panic is the program will stop. Um, so it's a kind of extreme way of handling errors. Uh, it's useful for debugging or prototyping at the beginning. Um, but its real purpose is basically to say we shouldn't have got here. There, there must be a bug somewhere um, that caused this. So, so for example, in this function, it would mean there was there's a bug because you're just not supposed to call this function with a zero for y, um, which, you know, it, that might be a legitimate way of doing it, but for, with this function, it seems pretty weird to say you can call it with any numbers except y can't be zero. Um, you'd have to know about maths, basically. And you'd have to know what it was doing inside um, and about some properties of maths before you could know that that wasn't a sensible thing to do. Um, so yeah, um, probably in this example you wouldn't really do this, but let's think a little bit more about what a panic is. So essentially, um, one way of thinking about it is a panic is uh, like an unrecoverable error. So something that goes wrong um, that you want to just stop because something bad has happened. Um, uh, so you just stop the program. Um, and what will actually happen is a little bit more complicated. You can, um, uh, we can see we, we have these two options, really, of either unwinding or aborting. And unwinding means um, do some tidying up, step back up through all the um, function calls that we're, we're down into, and tidy up the memory and stuff like that as we go. Uh, and potentially like collect information about that so we can print out a stack trace to the console or something like that, similar to what you would see in a... Um, a language with exceptions where you didn't catch the exception. Um, but depending on how you compiled the program, um, calling panic might just abort the program, which means just stop it dead. Um, and that, that that's useful for situations where uh, the machinery needed to do unwinding is just too expensive or can't be done on that platform or something like that. So if you're working in an embedded environment, something like that, um, uh, unwinding might be too expensive or not, or not possible. So general rule of thumb with panicking is um, you, you can use it in like prototyping or just a small program where you want to stop and you don't care too much that the error message is going to look a bit messy. Um, but generally, you should avoid panicking um, for code that's going to get reused in a lot of places. Now, there's, there's a subtlety to that, right? So um, you should avoid panicking except in cases where um, there's a bug um, is the rule of thumb that I would... Um, uh, go for in this situation. So, um, especially if there's a bug in your code, um, uh, like, like basically if you can never get here, then panicking uh, can be fine, right? Um, not everything, the best thing to do is design your types so that you can never 
you never have to even write the code that handles the case that you can never get to. Um, but the, the, the type system is not um, infinitely flexible. There are some situations that are hard to represent like that. By the way, in this case, um, there, there are at least some types which represent non-zero integers. I think there's a non-zero positive integer that's part of the standard library. There may be others as well. Um, so in this function we're looking at, that might actually be a good option. Um, although I do think that's probably only positive. Um, uh, but yeah, in, in general, you can't always get the type system to represent things that are um, not possible. So if you get to a line of code that is you shouldn't ever get there, Panicking is a completely reasonable thing to do. It's, it's the best way for you or someone else to find bugs in your code because your logic told you you should never get there and your logic turned out to be wrong. And that's very interesting. And getting a panic um, and hopefully a stack trace um, will help you find uh, that bug and fix it. Um, something that's a more uh, interesting case is what about if there's a bug in someone else's code? For example, this function we're looking at, the bug would be that someone called this function with, with y equal to zero, but maybe you've documented that function saying you should never call this if y is zero. Well, in that case, panicking can be an option. It's a pretty extreme option, uh, and you want to be careful about what restrictions you put on the people calling your stuff um, because it's just a bug waiting to happen. If someone doesn't read the docs, then their program will crash. They might not like that. Um, you might feel that that's the right thing to do and they should have read the docs and that can be the case. Anyway, panicking uh, stops the program or um, in in a multi-threaded situation it's more complicated than that. It stops the thread. Um, uh, if the main thread panics then the program stops immediately. Um, okay, so what we could do is use the option in this function example, I mean, we use the we could use the option type that we looked at in the last video. So um, this function returns an i64 um, as in an, an integer. Um, but what, what we could do is say, well, it might return an i64 if all's well, or it might return nothing if something went wrong. So you can see how our enums are kind of helping us out here. We can we, Now we've got two different cases we can handle. Um, so we, in that case, we just wrap the, the kind of fine return value in a sum, and then on line three, we just return none, saying something went wrong. Um, but in general, what we'd like to do is be more flexible or be more expressive than that, and say what went wrong. And for that, we have this other enum called result. And now, result is part of the standard library. You don't need to define it yourself here, but in this code, we're just showing you um, what the definition, definition is. So a result has two generic parameters, a T and an E, and the T is for, like, if everything went well, and the E is for what you want to do if something went wrong. Um, and they're wrapped up in these enum values called OK and error. Um, so that, that result enum is a general thing that, um, is always available to you in Rust. You can just write code and type in result, um, and it's already known because it's in the prelude. Um, and then below that, we've got this divide by error enum, and that's something we've written ourselves. Sorry, divide error. Um, that's something we've written ourselves, which is uh, an, an enum expressing what exactly went wrong. And this is going to be used in that E position in the generic types of results. So it's basically saying um, the kinds of errors that might happen when you call this function. Um, so um, we've slightly changed our function, our divide function now to have two different possible error cases. Um, just to demonstrate, you know, the fact that the, the error value can be something useful, give you some useful information. So divide now returns a result, and the type, the T uh, type is I64, which is like, if everything went fine, I'm going to return an I64. And then the E type is divide error, which is this enum that we've defined to say what might go wrong when you call divide. Um, and then you can see inside the code, relatively straightforward, what's happening is if, if X is 1, we return that that cannot divide one error. Uh, and if y is zero, then we can't divide by zero. So the, the first case is just like a fake case just to show us that maybe there's some other possible, possible errors. So you can see that by using the result type, we've got the option to say what happens if everything goes well, but also um, what type of value I want to return if everything goes badly. And quite often that will be an enum. It could be a string or something like that just to explain what happened. Um, it's up to you what you um, think is the best thing to do. So what, once we, we, we call a function that returns a result, we then need to handle it in a graceful way and decide what to do. So the, again, this um, 
just like with option, it kind of forces us to handle a case where something's missing. What result does is forces us to handle a case where something went wrong. And here's an example of how we might do that. Um, we use them, we, we're calling a divide function and we're using it inside a match statement. And then we can have a look at the, what happened. Either it was okay or it was an error. If it was okay, we just print out um, the answer. And if it was an error, then, well, in this case, we're just panicking saying couldn't divide by zero. Now, obviously, that might be wrong because we might have um, divided one in this case. But um, depending which, um, a definition of divide we're using. But yeah, the point is you can handle that error. So inside that error case, you could do a match on E and f figure out what type of error it is. Or in fact, you could make this match statement more complicated and have multiple error branches. Um, but the point is you have to handle those errors um, and think about it. Now that can get quite tricky um, because well, it can, can get a bit quite verbose. And there are some shortcuts we'll look at in a second. Um, to, to just say, if you just, if you want to say, oh, just panic. If something goes wrong, we can do that. Um, it is worth pointing out though that, um, because result is in the prelude, as I said, you don't have to say result colon colon in your match statement, similar to option. You don't have to say option colon colon sum. You just say sum. In this case, you don't have to say result colon colon. Okay. You just say, okay. So the point of this is, um, uh, our first option, panicking is basically saying stop the program. Everything's gone wrong. This um, use of a result is basically saying, um, declaring up front my function might go wrong, uh, and here's what here's what type of thing it will return if it goes wrong, and also here's what type of thing it will return if everything goes well. And that means you can be really, really clear about what your function does, and it can almost feel a little bit like handling exceptions, except everything's very explicit. Um, we'll look at some of the kind of shortcuts that make it a bit easier to work with. So here's the first shortcut. Um, and this is very useful, especially when you're prototyping or you're just getting started on a uh, program or you're just writing some example code. Um, you're, you don't want your code to be cluttered up with error handling stuff. So what you can do is call this function called unwrap. So unwrap is a method on result. Um, and it's also a method. It, there's also a, a method called unwrap on option. And in both of those cases, what it means is essentially if, uh, if things didn't go the way I expected, as in if there was an error or a none, uh, just panic and stop here. Otherwise, give me back the, the OK value, the result, um, the, the sum value or the OK value. Um, so essentially, kind of just ignore the error or the missing value. Um, crash if it comes up. Otherwise, just let me carry on. So as you can uh, imagine, that's quite useful for prototyping code where you don't want to have to write like a match statement or something to get hold of that OK or um, uh, error value and then do something if there's an error value. If you just want to crash or just want to panic, um, you can just call unwrap. Um, and that's also sometimes a good option. You know, as I said before, um, you, um, panicking is sometimes the right thing to do if you know you couldn't ever get here. So imagine if you'd already checked on the line above that um, y wasn't zero. Well, then it might be fine to call divide and then call unwrap, maybe adding a little comment saying um, this, this will never um, panic because y is never zero, something like that. Um, and it lets you just move on quickly from an error that you know won't happen. and it, uh, But then if it does happen, which is very common, um, it lets you, uh, it gets you a decent stack trace saying, uh, we crashed here because something that I knew would never happen did happen. Okay, um, there's also other functions with which do similar stuff, um, or rather, there's several functions here, so one of which does similar stuff and the rest of which do something quite different, but also start with the word unwrap. So let's start with expect. So expect is exactly the same as unwrap, except you can provide a custom error message that gets printed out with your panic. So that um, generally, I would recommend using expect instead of unwrap, unless it's kind of, unless you genuinely can't think of some additional information to add about what went wrong. Um, then there's also these unwrap or functions. Now they're functions on result, just like unwrap and expect. Um, so once you've got, when you've got a result back from result value back from divide or something like that, you can call these functions. And essentially what they do is give you uh, a nice value, uh, like a non error value, um, even if the result itself is an error. So if you do unwrap or you're basically saying, give me the, the correct result that came back from divide unless there's an error, in which case, give me this thing I'm giving you now. So the code that we can see on line two here says, um, divide 10 by zero, or if that went wrong, just give me back minus one. Um, and or default, 
does the same thing, except just give me back the default um, value for whatever the type is. So in the case of a number, I guess the default will be zero. Uh, and then you can also do unwrap or else, which is pretty much the same thing, but saying call a function to give me the answer. Um, instead of just me giving you the answer there. One, one place where that's really useful is if constructing your default answer, like your answer if there's an error, um, is a bit expensive. In that case, wrap it up in a function, a little um, closure, and then it won't actually get executed unless it's needed. So that's it. Um, those functions, they look dangerous because they look like unwrap, but they're not. Expect is the same as unwrap. But the other ones, the unwrap or, they're not dangerous. They're just saying, if something went wrong, here's the thing you should give me back instead. And either way, I've now got a number so I can carry on in this case. All right. So that all can be quite difficult to, uh, quite verbose to handle. Uh, like we like that it's explicit, um, that whatever happens, you know, what you can define when you create your function exactly what happens if everything goes well or what happens if things go wrong. But what we don't like, maybe, is that there's quite a lot of typing. You have to do that whole match thing for everything that goes wrong. So here's an example. Uh, this function can fail, calls divide twice. The first time it calls divide, um, it will um, set intermediate result to be the result of calling divide unless something went wrong, in which case it will return. And you can see that the, the signature of can fail is also a result, just like divide has a result. So this is... Um, the situation where we want to kind of propagate errors out a little bit like what happens automatically with exceptions in some languages where they just kind of bubble up through your code. In Rust, you can make it explicit like this. You can say, oh, well, my function that calls something that might fail also might fail. Um, and it can look like this. And you can see on line four, we, we've got a return statement there to say something went wrong. So I'm just going to return the thing that the, the error value that I got back from divide as my error value. Uh, and then we go on to line seven, we call divide again. And um, in this case, if everything went well, then our like, final result is an OK value with the, that second answer multiplied by two. Otherwise, if there's an error, our return value is just the error we got back from divide. So again, we're kind of propagating out the errors from divide if we've got them. Otherwise, we're kind of continuing with our code. And you can see that this could get pretty verbose. So what we can actually do um, is write a program that has exactly the same meaning as the one above, but looks a lot... Um, simpler and it focuses on the kind of the happy path um, uh, and that is by doing this tiny little thing which can be a little too subtle for my taste but otherwise I really like the question mark operator but basically what the question mark operator does is something like the code that you see above it's a uh, it essentially like kind of constructs that logic of um, if everything was okay just give me back the okay value um, and if not return immediately with the error that I got back. Now, it's not quite as simple as that because the error that you get back can actually, the question mark operator will actually attempt to convert um, the error that you got back into um, into the error type of this function. So there's there's a potential for like conversion of your errors, but generally it, the meaning is pretty much what we see above except for that subtlety. Uh, and you can see the code is much uh, easier to read. It's like the straightforward kind of happy path um, is coming through here. Um, notice also that question mark doesn't have to be kind of like the last symbol in your line. On question three, you know, we're actually using a question mark kind of in line. It's just part of an expression to say, um, if something went wrong, return. Otherwise, give me back the OK value. Um, and yeah, this the question mark operator can also, by the way, work for options. Um, you can and it will return none if um, if it hits a none. So that was error handling, really um, rushed through quickly. Um, but yeah, your basic options are, if something goes wrong, you can panic, but you basically should be trying to avoid doing that. Or you can get back a result, uh, or pass back a result, which basically expresses what might happen or what might not, ha what might not happen. Sorry, what? <laughs> that expresses like the good thing that might happen or the bad thing that might happen. Um, you can unwrap that if, you, if, some, if you're writing prototype code, um, and someone else is returning your result, you can just call unwrap to just panic. Um, that's Unwrapping is also useful if you know for sure that this thing shouldn't happen unless there's a bug. Um, panicking is also useful for that too. Um, and then there are lots of convenient things you can do. Once you've got a result back, you can call these unwrap or methods, which um, give you give you some kind of default if it all went wrong. 
Um, and then you can get uh, get into using the question mark operator to propagate your errors out from the function you call that has an error to you yourself um, returning a result type. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm sorry that this was as incoherent as usual. Um, uh, send me feedback in the comments and uh, see you next time.